the question is relates to presentation of data when we collect the data the data has to be presented in such a form which is meaningful we had taken the example of our class where 100 students had appeared in the class and they secured different marks and if we write on a single page all the marks obtained by different students it means no purpose however if we say that 40 such number of students obtained less than 40 percent marks and such number of students gained more than 70 percent marks and compare it with the previous year's figures we can say that the performance of the school or the class is improving or decreasing so this is the presentation of data that is we can arrive at the particular conclusion if we simply write the marks obtained by different students it will not serve any purpose so after collecting the data the data has to be presented in such a form which is meaningful easily understood and gives its main features at a glance so that the necessary action can be taken for the purpose or the purpose for which it was collected there are various ways of presenting the data we will understand the presentation of data with the help of tables now we will see we will here consider first example consider the marks obtained by 10 students in a class test given below here are the 10 students one student has obtained 55 another 66 another 95 and so on different students have obtained different marks but what does this data show does this mean any sense to you no this is raw data the, we have simply written the information in respect of the marks obtained by different students from this picture this data or information we cannot it is difficult for us to find out which is the highest marks and which is the lowest marks but if we rearrange this information in ascending or descending order we can easily find out that the lowest marks obtained by the student are this and the highest marks obtained by the any student are this one let us arrange these marks in the ascending order in the increasing order here we have rewritten after going through the same we observed that 25 are the lowest marks and after that comes 36 after that comes 42 and so on in, in the increasing manner we have rewritten the data so now we can easily say that the lowest marks are 25 and the highest marks are 95 presentation of the marks in this ascending or descending order is useful or easy when we are to present data in respect of only few number of students but but if we are to present data in respect of say 200 300 students then this form of presenting the data in ascending or descending order will become quite difficult now we will write uh, uh, see what is written presentation of data in ascending or descending order can be quite time consuming particularly when the number of observations in the experiment is large so what we can do if the number of entries are more now we will see another example what to do consider the marks obtained out of 100 marks that is the maximum marks are 100 and 30 students have of class 9 of a school have obtained the marks how many marks they have obtained one student has obtained 10 another 10 20 36 92 and so on the list goes on these are the marks obtained by 30 students out of 100 marks if we simply go through this data we cannot make anything because the data is lengthy however we can do that 
we will find out how many students of 10 marks are there. We will find that from this that this is the single student. In the same way 20, any other person or student has obtained 20, no. We will write this is the single student. Then we will find out the 30, whether any person has obtained 36, 36, 36, 36, 36, this is the 36, this is the 36, this is the 36, any other 36, this is the 36. So, 3 students have obtained 36. In this, in this way, we will form the table that how much students have obtained the particular number of marks. In this way, we have formed the table that the particular number of students have obtained these marks. So, in this way, 50 marks have been obtained by 3 students. We have formed a table. To make the data more easily understandable, the student number of students who obtain a certain number of marks have been mentioned where we have done this. This is an ungrouped frequency distribution table because if we make the group say up to 20, 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, it will be like a group. But here we have mentioned only the marks and the number of students who obtained the relevant marks. This is the ungrouped frequency distribution table or we can say it that it is simply a frequency distribution table and the table may become very large if the number of students are very large. So, if the number of students or the number of entries are say 100 or more, we will make use of grouped frequency distribution tab table. What is that? Let us consider another example. Let us now consider the following frequency distribution table which gives the weights of 40 students of a class. That is, there are 40 students in a class and the weights of all the students have been written and we have grouped the students on the basis of weight. That is, all the students who have the weight between 31 to 35 have been mentioned here. In the same way, all the students who have the weight between 36 to 40 have been clubbed together and so on. In the same way, from 75 to 71, only one student is there. That is, the number of students who fall in the group of particular weight are grouped together. This is the grouped frequency table where we have formed the group of weight and we have mentioned the number of students against that. Presenting data in this form simplifies and condenses data and enables us to observe certain important features at a glance. We, from this figure, we can easily say that only there are two students who have the weight equal to 66 or more than that or there are only 11 students who have weight between 31 to 35 kg. We can arrive at some conclusion but here is again a problem. What is that? Suppose a student comes new admission and he has weightage between weight between 35 kg point 500 gram and another student comes which has weight between 45 and 46 that is he has the weight of 45 kg and 500 grams. Now where will you put because there is no group which where we can add these two students. Now we will see it in the next example. So, now what will happen if two new students of the weights 35.5 kg and 45.5 kg are admitted in the class? So, this is the previous scenario which we have discussed. 
we cannot add student here first student which is having 35.5 we cannot add student here because there is gap of one kg in each class group in each group there is a difference of one kg so we cannot so what is this in, what we can do we will see that there is difference of one kg in each group that is 35 to 36 difference of one 45 to 46 difference of one 40 to 41 difference of one 55 to 56 difference of one in each group there is a difference of one so this is the lower class limit this is the upper class limit difference is two in any two class intervals or in any two groups so what we will do is we will divide the difference which is one by two and it comes 0.5 kg we will add 0.5 kg to the upper class limit and subtract the 0.5 kg from the lower class limit we will go in doing the same in each group that is in case of 31 we will reduce that is it which is the lower class limit we will reduce 0.5 and it will become 30.5 and we will add 0.5 in the upper class limit and it will become 35.5 in the case of this 36 this is the lower class limit we will reduce or subtract this 36 by 0.5 and it will become 35.5 and we will add 0.5 that is the half kg to the upper class limit and it will become 40.5 so you can see that now this becomes continuous and 35.5 which is the upper class limit in this group becomes the lower class limit in the next figure next class group so this is becomes the continuous weights there is no gap in between any of the figures 65.5 now the again next group starts with 65.5 this group ends with 75.5 and the next group starts with 75.5 now there is an important point which is to be noted suppose there is an entry of say for 50.5 kg in the class now where will you add 50.5 because you can add it here you can add it here also if you add it at both the sides the entry will become double the students will increase by two whereas it will be actually increasing by one so what to do by a say convention the 55.5 will be taken in the on the next group in the next group and not on the upper class limit but on the where it is written as lower class limit so if there is an person which has gained say entered the class or taken new admission as say 60.5 it will not be entered in this group it will be taken in this group by convention so you can here have observed that if we make the class intervals continuous or uh, any student who gets admission in the class and we make the group on the basis of weight we can make the proper group in the same way if any student say obtains 30.7 percent marks and groups have been made 20 to 30, 30 and 31 to 40 and we have excluded 30 point 32 31 then we can make this data continuous in the same manner now the next application of statistics statistics is used in a variety of fields including business economics social science and natural science how statistics are used in business and economics suppose you are 
have been asked to do a research on the particular product, say washing powder. You are an employee of a company which is dealing with washing powder. You will do the market research and will give your report on the basis of facts and figures that this company is selling its products at this price. This company is selling its product at this price. This is the sale of the particular company and this is the earnings of the particular company and how the customers behave if the prices are made up or lower. So all this type of research is based on or you give your report only in the form of statistics or the data so that your employer can take necessary decision whether to increase the price or what type of or which price should be set for the product which is to be launched in the market. In the same way forecasting is done in business that at what price we are likely to gain maximum profits or at which price we can get, get maximum demand from the public. Then we do financial analysis that is how much profits have been earned by the particular company, what is where they are doing expenses, all these are presented in the form of statistics. All the decisions are taken by the organizations as well as the government on the basis of the statistics. However, some populist measures are also taken by the government we will leave that aside. Most of the decisions which are of business nature are taken only on the basis of the hard facts or the statistics. Statistics is also used in opinion polls. When the polls are likely say in one month the opinion polls start powering in on the newspapers that the particular political party is likely to win the majority. How they get this? They conduct surveys and present it on the basis of the particular data that the particular organized or particular political party may win. This is only based on the particular data. Population analysis is also based on statistics and statistics is also used in understanding social phenomena. Healthcare. Statistics also plays a crucial role in medical research, clinical trials, healthcare planning, sports. Statistics is used to analyze player performance, team strategies and making informed decisions in sports. If the particular sportsman is not performing well in the matches which he has played, he may be asked to leave the matches or he may not be nominated for the next match. How it is decided? It is only on the basis of the performance which is in the form of data or statistics. How many matches he has won? In how many matches his performance was not up to the mark? All this information is only in the form of data or statistics. Quality control. If we are selling a particular brand of product and we are daily receiving many complaints regarding its side effects. What we will have to do? We will do quality control. It is only on the basis of the statistics that we have decided to take this step. Statistics is used in manufacturing industries to monitor and improve product quality. These are only a few examples of how statistics is used in different fields. The applications of statistics are wide ranging that is we use the data or the statistics in different spheres of life and the usage of statistics is growing as in many fields decisions are to be taken on the basis of the data which has been placed before them. Thanks for watching. If you like our course, please spare some time to give a star rating to our course.